put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Batman Begins Mood Review After Bruce Wayne loses his parents at age 10, gunned down in front of him, it haunts him and he wants justice for himself and for the people of Gotham. He wants to follow in his father's footsteps. He's quite the idealist, as his father was, and try to help people. He goes around the world, the criminal underworld, increasing his martial arts proficiency and eventually becomes a blip on the radar of the League of Shadows, who takes him in and trains him, gives him the tools that he can return to Gotham as not just a man, but a symbol, as Batman. The Meanwhile, in Gotham, the fight is fought by Rachel Dawes, played by Kate Holmes, who unfortunately a bit lacks the gravitas for the role of a, I think, assistant district attorney is the, is the title. She's not a bad actress, I have no problem with her, she just doesn't quite have the gravitas for, you know, the, the responsibility of that. And the, one of the few honest cops, did Frank Miller write this? Anyway, Gordon played by the surprising casting choice of Gary Oldman, playing very much against type. And I suppose that's about what I should say. The very first thing you see in this movie is the bats as depicted on the cover, and the, the the logo of Batman, or this version of it, emerging from sort of the, the shadows and in the midst of all these bats. And with the approach that the film takes, this becomes a sort of ominous presence and an introduction that tells us what will come, but doesn't, you know, it, it's almost as if it is telling us the Batman will come, you know. About half the movie passes before Bale dons the suit, and this is the right choice because that time is spent building up who Bruce Wayne is and sort of developing who Batman will become. It is very much an origin story and it has sort of set the standard for origin stories. The recently released The Amazing Spider-Man took very much the same approach. The... There's a lot of excellent stuff in this film. I suppose I could start with the casting. Christian Bale is the best Bruce Wayne and the best Batman. The one thing you can say about him is the Bat voice, which is pretty universally agreed upon as not good. Apparently, Bale thinks of it as a sort of animal growling at enemies, but it just, it comes off kind of goofy. I say personally, sort of works in the moment, but when you sort of think back to a scene of it, 
then you're thinking, oh, man, that's all goofy. It's, it's kind of when, when you're not engulfed in the, in the fear of it, fear is quite the theme here, then it, it doesn't quite work. And yeah, I think, I think they should go on something else. But yeah, very convincing Bruce Wayne and very threatening Batman. This Bruce Wayne has very much the, you know, the, the dual identity and trying to balance this double life is very much evident in this incarnation, more so than I'd say some of the more recent, some, some of the other recent movie adaptations. <clears throat> the, uh, you know, the, the choice for Gordon is unexpected but it really worked out well the you know you kind of forget that Oldman can actually play a role that isn't you know the bad guy in the movie and yeah I mean the dude's got acting chops and he really does well here there's this sort of aging I'm not sure quite idealism but he's just he does really want to do the right thing, and he, he refuses to do the wrong thing, in fact. But there's a line pretty early on where he says he, he won't rat even on these, you know, these crooked cops that he's surrounded by. So, you know, he very much wants to do the right thing, but he's kind of... There's, there's not much chance for him to do it, and that's where Batman comes in. Batman puts the fear in the criminals, and he has an ally in Gordon. Rachel is a great character, and when, when you sort of look past the fact that she's an ADA, Katie Holmes does a great job. Actually, she's, you know, mostly pretty convincing. There, there is this one scene where she's supposed to be like, she's supposed to be scolding another character, and it just comes off like a child throwing a tenter tantrum, a, a little bit at least. It's, it's just kind of like when Ben Affleck plays Jack Ryan. They're not necessarily a bad actor outside of it, it's just they don't have the sort of you know, yeah, the, the gravitas for that kind of role. But, yeah, other than that, strong female character, you know, not at all a damsel in distress. In fact, if she needs Batman's help at all, it's only because she can be a little bit reckless in her, you know, dogged determination to help other people. Sometimes she gets herself a little bit in trouble, but she also proves that she is quite capable of, you know, yeah, she, she's not stupid, and she, she's not just a helpless woman, you know, which I think is great. I, you know, I wish more female characters were written like this, yes, even in comic book, you know, story, adaptations. Tom Wilkinson, I, I, yeah, I believe that's how you pronounce it, just fantastic mob boss, really ruthless, you just, yeah, you just hate him utterly. And the, the the head of the League of Shadows is Ra's al Ghul, and he doesn't speak much. Basically, the person who speaks for him is Henry Ducard, I believe. I believe it's Henry, not Henri, who is played by Liam Neeson, who, <laughs> as usual, plays a mentor. And, as usual, he does fantastic at it. You know, he is really the person who trains Bruce and you just really get this, yeah, you know, you, you look up to him yourself. You know, you can really understand why this, you know, why this transformed Bruce, transforms Bruce, why he can become the Batman after this. The, oh, and I have to mention, Dr. Crane. The ah, I suppose I shouldn't give that away, but Killian Murphy is the one who plays him, and just the guy is just disturbing. You know, even when he's just 
not even really trying to be. He's just, there's just something about the way he looks and the way he looks at people is just really unpleasant and un unsettling. And he very much brings this to this character and does really, really well. There's, there's a sort of perverse joy in him, which just, he's, he's, he runs Arkham Asylum which they also, you know, get into the story, and yeah, there's just something sickly about him and the way he looks and, you know, psychoses and such, it's just that. And I suppose that's basically it for the characters, and Dr. Crane segues me nicely into the psychological aspects. Chris Nolan does psychological thrillers, that's just what he does, and doing Batman as a psychological thriller makes a surprising amount of sense. You know, you have this element of, again, fear, you know, Batman uses a symbol to intimidate his opponents, you know, he's not dressing up in, you know, brightly colored, yeah, yeah, bright colors and, and spandex to well, Originally he was, but not here. Very much not here. I'll get to that. So yeah, he he does use this this tactic, and yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense to have that. And add to that that his rogues gallery, there are some really disturbed and disturbing souls therein, and you know Nolan picks a few and really does them quite a lot of justice here. They are also very scary and very, you know, you feel like this requires Batman. You know, this is not just something that the police could deal with, even if they weren't corrupt. This is big, you know. And yes, I suppose that brings some nicely into the way Batman is depicted when sort of yeah when when he attacks you know the various goons basically it plays out like a supernatural horror movie something comes out of the shadows and takes these guys one by one you know you just hear them screaming or see them disappear into the darkness and you know stuff like that, and that works really well. It you are afraid of Batman in those scenes. You know you're afraid that he'll come and take you. You know, and then you know you suddenly realize, oh right, I'm I'm not a bad guy. You know, he's, but yeah, it it makes a lot of sense to show the dread that they feel for him. You understand why he works, why it works for Batman to do this. You know, and the, you know, again, why it can't just be the police, why it needs to be more. And, you know, the, the way it's filmed and edited works really well for that. And that extends to the, you know, we do also see him fight others. And, you know, as, as we should, there's, you know, he's not just a ninja, he's also a very capable fighter. And yeah, these are also very, very chaotic, very disoriented. It's sort of, it's sort of like Saving Private Ryan only with Batman, you know. It is the chaos and just, you can't completely pick up on everything that happens. And you're not really supposed to. War is more chaotic than that and you know, Batman taking out bad guys is also more chaotic than that. You just can't completely. However, it should have stayed there and it doesn't. And that brings me into one of the negatives, one of the few negatives about the movie, which is that Chris Nolan is not good at action. I, not, I have not seen him do action completely well yet. And this includes The Dark Knight, haven't seen The Dark Knight Rises yet, well, day after tomorrow, and Inception. It's not the choreography, it's the coverage. He just does not 
shoot action all that well. You know, which doesn't mean that his action scenes are less exciting, because that's definitely not true, but they're a little harder to follow, and in the case of Inception, they also a little bit just lack, other than the zero gravity fighting, they kind of lack, I don't know, style, a, a sort of flavor to it that sets it apart, I don't know. It's a little harder to explain there, but here it's very much, it's too close, it, it'll cut from like a really close shot to a really wide medium shot and it's just really disorienting. You cannot follow what happens and the, the sequence of events. You have to watch scenes several times or like, you know, afterwards, after you leave the theater, you're like, wait, what happened? Then he punched him and then he kicked that and then that, ah, oh, that's how it, and yeah, it's just a tad too, yeah, he, he just doesn't quite know how to do action yet. And the, the final sort of, yeah, actually, the, the pacing is pretty good. You know, I say that the about half the movie passes before you see Batman. You're not really missing him as such. You know, every single scene, I can't think of a single scene in this that doesn't establish and or develop character or plot, and or plot. It's just, there's nothing wasted here. Everything, in fact, almost everything is set up and or you know, pay off to something. Everything is set up properly and everything is paid off on. I can't think of a single thing that isn't, only oh, one or two, almost nothing is, you know, forgotten or just a throwaway. There are, there are things where you think, ah, oh, that's just a, like a throwaway joke or something, and then later it's actually followed up on. It's just unbelievable. I, they must have spent a lot of time. David Goyer does amazing work sometimes. This is one of those times. And, yeah, just they must have spent forever perfecting the script and just making sure that everything goes together with everything else. And in spite of that, somehow making it not contrived, I, it's really quite impressive. There's, there's at least very, very little in this that comes off as contrived. Also an aspect that is really impressive not only do they fit in the mob and a couple of famous faces from the rogues gallery, I will not reveal which for anyone who hasn't already seen the movie, not only do they fit in that in addition to the, you know, the or origin story which takes up, you know, yeah, the whole film, they actually do justice to several major aspects. You know, you, you have the fear, that's, that's something that he develops fairly early on. And then over the course of it, you know, you see him go on, on, on early Batman missions, and it's like, you know, oh, oh, that crap, that didn't work, I have to think of something, you know, to solve this situation. And then he, you know, goes and figures out, how am I going to get out of this situation in the future? But yeah, they actually also have him be the detective that, you know, we expect. He actually goes and investigates and figures out what is really going on here. There's, there's something going on in Gotham, it's bigger than usual, and I can't quite figure out, you know, there's, there's something more to it. He goes, he interrogates, and he pieces together what is what is going on, you know. Now, that leaves me with the realistic approach of this. The equipment of Batman in this, and the, you know, including the Batmobile, is all based on real stuff, you know, it's, it's not comic book physics, it's not that, you know, ah, it just, you know, whatever, it's, in a comic book we can do it, no, here it actually, it comes from reality, 
the the suit that he wears, the the Batman suit or the, the yeah yeah suit costume whatever. It's Kevlar, you know. It's, yeah, it'll it'll stop bullets and you know knives and such. So yeah, that makes sense. He's he's going to have to fight off people. So yeah, that actually. I'm not going to give it away, but that reminds me of a joke in the film, and really, the humor is quite good. I, it, had been a, it had been a while before I wanted it. since I last watched this movie, I'd forgotten how funny it was. It has some real good jokes in there that really work. You know, there's, there's almost nothing that sort of feels forced. I, actually, I don't think there are any jokes that feel forced. Anyway, yeah, all the... You know different things. The Batmobile is based on like a combat jeep something. There, there have been mixed reactions to it. You know, I personally, overall, I prefer the look of the old one. You know, I do think that that it looks cooler, but I do like the new one, and I can appreciate that it actually exists. You know. But yeah, all the, you know, the grappling gun, the, the armor, the everything, you know, it's all based on reality, you know, and the, in general, just the, the entire approach is that of realism with, you know, they call it heightened realism in the DVD extras, you know, but, but yeah, it's, it's psychologically credible, again, psychological thriller, and it's, you know, ev everything feels real. Everything that happens and everything that, you know, people are, you, you can follow people's logic very much. And sort of the, the, the city of Gotham itself is also very credible. It, it really looks like people live here, you know, excuse me, the, in, in fact, on the, excuse me, the, the actions of people, excuse me, this is very much a film where the, you know, so, some of the characters change over the course of it, especially Bruce Wayne, you can really feel a massive change, and because of Bale, and the rather talented ten-year-old they got, I think he's ten, to play much younger, you really believe it. You really believe that he goes through all these changes. It doesn't feel forced. And a lot of this is through these various... He sort of meets different people and they basically speak their own philosophy on things. And that affects him in some way. You know, I, I do personally think that there's a little bit too much of sort of Katie Holmes says something to Bruce Wayne, and Bruce Wayne goes and changes his behavior because of that. Sort of, it's, I don't know. It, it just feels a little. That part just kind of bothers me a little. It it doesn't. It, it feels like he's just going by what she says. It, it, you know, even though it is actually again she. Katie Holmes does not quite have what it takes to speak these words of wisdom, which they are, and make it feel... It, it's someone putting words in her mouth. We can tell, you know, sadly. Anyway, the... But, but yes, he meets these various people. They share their personal philosophy, and through that, he sort of... He reflects on that, and it shapes who he becomes. You know, he, and, and that's very much like real life, you know, you, you meet different people and it just kind of, and it's also noteworthy, you know, in spite of what I just said about the uh, Rachel Dahl's character, he doesn't just blindly do what other people say that he should do, you know, he does actually reflect and I can't really give anything away about that, but yeah, there, and, and really, we feel like Bruce Wayne, you know, that's also kind of why we don't need to see Batman for even half the movie. It's 
you know, we, we connect with Bruce Wayne, and over time, he, he develops Batman. It's also a rather epic film. It's really big. You know, very early on, we get these big, sweeping shots of... Uh, I, I'm no good. I don't know, Himalayas? Something like that. Big mountains, these icy... That's where he trains with the... League of Shadows, you know, and, you know, these big shots of Gotham, you really get a sense of scope in the film, you know, you don't feel like this was just done on the stage, or this was, you don't feel like things are in a controlled environment, it feels like real life, it feels as big as real life. The orchestral score is, you know, nice, big, broad, sweeping, very effective. In fact, in, in general, the film is very effective. You know, you're terrified when Batman's attacking thugs. You're laughing when they're d d doing jokes. You know, you're excited when you see a fight, even if you can't always mm, make it out. You know, all these things. You know, every time someone speaks their philosophy, it makes you think, you know, I do wish that the psychology had been expanded upon the one theme, the, the one button that they just keep pressing, fear, 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 but beyond that, and to be honest, they do go very well beyond that in The Dark Knight. You know, it, it might have been deemed too, too much to go beyond that when they also were dealing with the origin and the mobsters and the two you know, bad guys that, yeah. I suppose that more or less covers it. The film is just over two hours, if you don't count the credits, I think two hours and five minutes, and they're an exciting ride all the way through. I, you know, I've watched this movie three times now, and yeah, I frankly forgotten exactly how good it was, but yeah. And one of Nolan's best, which is no small feat. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.